everything about that performance yesterday, for the majority of it, to be honest, I know there was a brief spell at the start, was just so opposite to what we've seen from Chelsea this year. It was passive. There was a lack of energy, a lack of movement, a lack of creativity. Um, what we've seen about this Chelsea side, even when it hasn't worked, we've been aggressive, we've been pressing from the front, we've been creative, we've been ambitious, we've been tenacious. I don't think West Ham come away from that game going, oh, we defended for our lives, the keeper had to make worldy saves, that just wasn't the case. Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for my rational perspective on Chelsea nil, West Ham 1. Where did it all go wrong yesterday? As with a lot of these rational perspectives, I like to sort of take my time and not rush into them sometimes because either I want to take a look at the game or I just want to gather my thoughts um, because I think after a game like that, that's so infuriating and frustrating I think sometimes you can rush into conclusions and end up saying stuff and, and things that, you know, just, you know, aren't that rational. Um, and that's sort of one, what I wanted to do. I wanted to think about the game, let it fester, think about what went wrong and sort of analyse it a little bit deeper. Because I think that's what a lot of us are going to be thinking is how did it go so wrong yesterday? Um and why was the performance so below par? Because for me, it is the worst performance of the season. Um, there's been many times I've sat in this chair this season and talked about when performances, you know, or results haven't gone well. There is always a ray of light within that performance. Either we've been unlucky, uh, we've had a tight VAR call. Cool. Um, there, there's been signs of like, you know, Valencia, even though that was a very frantic game, there were positive moments within that match to City, the opening 25 minutes. But I think not only the fact of the performance itself, but the fact we lost to a West Ham team that have been dismal, haven't won a Premier League game since September, have looked like a side that just looked for me so suitable for, for this Chelsea side to come up against. Um, everything about that performance yesterday, for the majority of it, to be honest, I know there was a brief spell at the start, was just so opposite to what we've seen from Chelsea this year it was passive there was a lack of energy a lack of movement a lack of creativity um what we've seen about this Chelsea side even when it hasn't worked we've been aggressive we've been pressing from the front we've been creative we've been ambitious we've been tenacious you could not describe that Chelsea performance I, I think you could pin some of those labels onto West Ham I thought they were very good but at the same time we were so below par I don't think West Ham had to do a lot to get out of a win I have to be honest I don't think Chelsea I don't think West Ham come away from that game going oh we defended for our lives the keeper had to make worldy saves that just wasn't the case and especially with some of their keeping problems recently even though it wasn't Roberto I still think Chelsea just never tested uh, their keeper enough to warrant him making any world-class saves and that's just even more frustrating um, I think you looked at what was lacking in that performance. I think Tammy Abraham, especially, I think that's what was proved yesterday of how essential he is to that team. Of course, as Lampard stressed in his post-match interview, it isn't all about one player. And collectively, I think there's responsibility here. I don't think it's about one individual mistake. I think you can accept that this is a collective thing where a lot of players were under par uh, for Chelsea yesterday. And that's the thing with this system, especially with Lampard, what he's trying to implement. It's not all based on the creativity or looking at one individual you know a lot of times last season we looked at a player like Eden Hazard and his magic to get us out of situations this year it's all about uh, a collective sort of unit and getting goals from a lot of different areas so I don't think you can pin it all on one person I think a lot of players underperformed and just didn't weren't up to the required standard I think there was just many times and there were warning signs in that first half to be honest even though we were creating chances in some aspects and looked like we were going to get at West Ham we're going to open up the game and, and take the lead and go on to progress in the game. There were warning signs in that first half. Uh, Kepa had to make a brilliant save from a header. I thought we were just, we just didn't look aggressive in challenges. I think there was many times I thought players just weren't going in for challenges. Um, West Ham were allowed to grow confidence in the game. And it felt very much like games last season at home, that games that are allowed to drift. Uh, and even games that have gone into nil-nil at half time, Chelsea were still 
going into that second half on the front foot looking to make the breakthrough. That didn't happen after the break. And I think the warning signs were there in that first half that if Chelsea didn't step up, step up their performance, it could very much turn into a very disappointing day. And that's what happened with the Creswell goal. I think just generally the team selection was strange in some sense. It's always easy in hindsight to go, that's wrong. Of course, there are reasons why Frank made those changes, but I just... I was a bit staggered Pedro coming into the team. This is a guy who hasn't played since October, um, coming straight in. Uh, he didn't feature at all in midweek. So there's been no signs that that player was on the periphery about to get a start. Um, that was strange. I could understand Giroud starting, but Giroud was just so under par. I talked about Tammy Abraham and the gaping hole that was left with that. Giroud, he had chances as well. There were many times Reese James, who I think, think was our best outfield player, would put wonderful crosses into the box in that first half and I think there became a point where Reese James just probably got a little bit disheartened by the fact he kept on getting down the right putting great balls into the box which is prime time for Drew this is this is his bread and butter this is why you have Drew in the team and Drew either missed those chances or wasn't making the required movement to get to those crosses and I think probably in that second half as you saw once the changes were made Reese James didn't put as many uh, crosses into the box I think probably that was the reason as well the sub to take Drew off which I could understand bringing on Willian and Kante I thought the midfield was just a little bit too stationary for me I don't Kante I always love having him in the team because of that balance between Kovacic Kante and Jorginho especially if you're just having you know two of those I didn't understand taking off Jorginho as well that was a bit of a weird one for me um Frank has done it a few times now Jorginho didn't have the best game but I just think in terms of the rhythm of our play I've spoken about this a lot on this channel while I just in a game even if you're chasing a goal I think maybe even taking off a player like Mason Mount who wasn't having a good day I think would have made more sense to me because Jorginho, it's all about, you know, keeping hold of possession, making smart passes, uh, creating a rhythm, creating that link between defense and attack. Once you take off a player like Jorginho, I think as we're seen against Valencia and has been seen in previous games, that connection can quickly break down. Kante, uh, of course, is a brilliant player and Kovacic at times can be a brilliant player. He had a really off day yesterday, probably his worst performance of the season individually. But that link is is not there. And I think just the weird way to go false nine, I thought was just strange. Michi Batshuayi has been Lampard's second choice. And I think a lot of us expected him to start this game. And for him not to come off the bench was another strange move to me. Um, I could understand either bringing on Willian and hudson Doy, but to then not go with a striker seemed weird. Yes, Giroud Hatton had the best day, but... Michi has proven in the past he's a great plan B to have that connection he has with Pulisic being a fox in the box you know being that player we want there and the fact he went false nine which he hasn't done already this season he hasn't done it it felt just a bit of a strange sub for me with Lampard I think he got wrong and I think limited our play from there because we just didn't look like we were going to score and we looked like we could score in the first half but in the second half there was just no response and collectively that's a, a frustration I think as I say, Reese James probably comes out of it of light um, for his performance. I think also Kepa kept us in the game. He really did. He made a uh, save in the first half and in the save in the second half, both um, from headers that kept Chelsea in the game. Um, I think Creswell's goal was just so indicative of the problem, just passive. It felt like way too easy for him to cut in and get a shot away. And to be honest, at the end there, at, at points, West Ham looked more progressive look more aggressive they were getting to second balls and we had no answer once they dropped back we just didn't we had no answer and it never looked like Chelsea were going to break through that defense which to be fair has been really poor recently and it's just all round it's a bad result you look at West Ham's form we didn't test their keeper all round it was just a really dismal day and um, it's going to be a harsh learning curve for Lampard as Lampard always is in, in his post-match thoughts. He's never extreme either way if it's a good result or bad result. Of course, you don't want to make harsh judgments and a good thing about the amount of games we have at the moment is there's a chance to bounce back at home to Aston Villa but we need to bounce back because now this is free without a win. We went on such a good run and that winning feeling and that momentum helped. You don't want it to flip and turn the other way, especially when we're going into such a crucial period of the season and we've had these problems before in winter where performances drop, results drop and it costs us in the league. Uh, we've had such a brilliant start to the season in, in comparison to what we expected. I just hope that doesn't affect 
the squad and especially the younger players too much and we can bounce back quickly. Chelsea didn't deserve anything from the game and we got what we deserved, which was no points from the game. Um, so now we move on. Those are my thoughts on the game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell to never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I'll see you again. Thank you.